The Council for the Advancement of the South African Constitution questions public protector Busisiwe Mkwebane's fitness to hold office. The North Gauteng High Court ruled in favor of Public Enterprises Minister Pravin Gordon on his urgent application to suspend Mkwebane's remedial actions against him. Calls into question the rationality of the behavior of the public protector, in, firstly, in issuing uh, substandard reports, and secondly, you know, seeking to go and, uh, and defend them uh, in the courts when, uh, you know, it's quite clear that, uh, you know, there was very little uh, prospects of success. In this matter, the public protector conceded that she would ordinarily not oppose uh, uh, such an application for interdict, but uh, chose to do so on this occasion. Now, the Helen Sussman Foundation is calling on Parliament to urgently expedite a vote to remove Mkwebane from office. So how damaging is this ruling for the public protector? Well, let's ask that question to Anton van Dalsen. He's from the Helen Sussman Foundation. How damaging is it, Anton? Well, our letter to the Speaker uh, follows the finding by the Constitutional Court uh, last Monday in which they confirmed a High Court decision uh, which uh, declared that the public protector is liable for 15 percent of the costs of a, of a case involving the Reserve Bank and APSA out of her own pocket. And um, the reason the uh, High Court and confirmed by the Constitutional Court, the reason behind that is as a result of the grossly unreasonable manner in which she had dealt with the matter and also that, that she had acted in bad faith. And I think that um, what one has to keep in mind is that the public protector's office is an extremely important one um, and at the same time uh, in making a public office holder uh, personally liable for court costs is something that the courts almost never do. It's the, only the second case that I'm aware of. The first one was that of Batabili Dlamini recently when she was still Minister of Social Security and this is only the second case so that for us underlines the seriousness of the situation and the serious conduct that the public protector um, is guilty of. Now if you look at the language that's been used in these various uh, legal wranglings that she's been involved in uh, of late, um, a, a, a previous one spoke of a lack of integrity, honesty, independence. This morning the terms vague and nonsensical was used by the judge to describe certain sections of the report that it was focused on. Um, the language itself from a legal point of view is rather damaging, isn't it? It's very damaging and it's rare that courts use that language. They're usually very reticent um, and they only use language of that nature if they are very sure of their case. And I think this draws into question um, the, uh, whether the public protector should continue in office. Um, the um, section in the Constitution uh, says that she can remo be removed from office uh, on the grounds of misconduct, incapacity or incompetence. Do you believe that's been proved? I think if one takes the language that you've just quoted, I think it's clear. And for that reason, we have approached the Speaker to set the process in motion in Parliament. The, uh, the uh, major criticism has been is that there's been a politicalized, uh, politicalization, I don't even know if that's a word, um, of the, the public protector's yes. office. And yet now we're looking to Parliament uh, to uh, intervene in what you believe is an increasingly damaging and dangerous uh, situation. How do we separate those two? It's difficult to separate them, but I think... Um, the point is that the, the public protector has lost credibility through a variety of court cases. Uh, it's quite clear and if Parliament does nothing, the question then arises, what does it do to Parliament's credibility? And I think Parliament needs to think of this very, very seriously. Um, uh, there's also these cost implications that you spoke of, not only the fact that uh, uh, the, them separating the individual from the office, making a yeah. point in itself, it's also just the basic cost of it and we're already dealing with an institution that for years has said they do not have enough money to do their job. Certainly. Um, and I think what is becoming clear is that there's a whole series of court reviews that are taking place in respect of the activities of the public protector and at some stage one obviously has to ask the question, is she fit for office? Do you believe that there uh, is now a, real, a pattern that you can see in the kind of cases and complaints that she's taking on? Not, not a pattern, but I think they all conform to what I've just mentioned, what the Constitution um, 
mentions as the criteria for the removal of a public protector misconduct and incompetence. Uh, and I, if one keeps those in mind, then what one sees through these court reviews conforms to those uh, descriptions. We're going to leave it there. Thank you so much. Anton van Dalsen is with the Helen Suzman Foundation. Thank you so much you. for your reaction to that lead story of ours.